Good afternoon, Patriots. Constitution Vet, and welcome to another Sunday sit-down with CV. Okay, guys. Today, we're going to wrap up this week's theme. The theme has been, if you're surrounded by tyrants, become their worst nightmare and fight back. Be like John Paul Jones. Dive headlong into the fray and fight against tyranny, corruption, expose everything that is there. Don't do it subtly, do it actively, and fight in their home turf. You'd be surprised how much one person can do. Look at all last year. Look at all that we've accomplished just by we select few who are not willing to just submit. So, this focus for this Sunday is understanding a major component of that fight. How we conduct this fight through a Christian mindset. The way we fight against tyranny is with love. Now, I'm not talking about the fuzzy, feel-good love or the Valentine's Day love or the Hallmark movie love. <laughs> Garbage. I'm talking about the real biblical love. Now, what does that mean? Well, there's a lot to that. But one thing I want to focus on for this video is looking at how biblical love is described in 1 John and 1 Corinthians. One part of this definition is that biblical love is the love of action. Actually doing something. Not just saying you're going to do something. Moving beyond just my thoughts and prayers are with you, but actually going out and doing something. Being brave. Taking that step and acting as Christ has called you to act. First part here in 1 John 3.16. The first component of acting out this biblical love is this. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. Now, this is the ultimate sign of love, is sacrificing yourself for your brethren. Right below that, you have other forms of sacrifice. Sacrificing your time, sacrificing your finances, putting yourself on the back burner. Putting your ego, your time, all your, you know, preferences, whatnot, putting yourself on that back burner and instead focusing on someone else, giving your time to other things, other causes, other pursuits. That is a form of sacrifice. That is a piece of biblical love. So, whether it be something simple like creating a YouTube channel, okay, and reaching out to people, that is a small piece of the biblical love of action. That is you acting sacrificially. Again, that's simple. A much bigger version could be, you know, sacrificing your time with your newly wedded spouse. Okay, that requires a lot of sacrifice, obviously. But that clearly is a daily form of biblical love. Moving on. This type of love is also expressed practically. In 1 John 3, 17 through 18, it says this. But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? What this is saying is, if you call yourself a Christian, and if you see your brethren in need, and you know you can help them, and if you choose not to help them, you're not abiding by biblical love. Now, obviously, there's a lot more to this. But to keep it simple for this video, if you want to fight against tyranny in this modern era, you have to be willing to utilize biblical love of action. You have to be willing to act out on what you love and show that love. For example, if you know that something in your local area and your local government is corrupt. Call them out. 
Sacrifice your time. Do something. Create a town hall. Create memorandums. Draft notices. Vote. Do something. When you do those things, you're sacrificing your time, you are being practical, and in that process, during that process, if you see another brother of yours who needs help, who needs hope, who needs encouragement, give them that hope, give them that encouragement, help them. If you don't do that, can you really call yourself a Christian? Finally, biblical love of action is expressed relationally. Now, this can get very deep, very personal as well. This can also be found in many relationships, too. Let me go through here. Now, many of you have probably heard this before. This is 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through uh, 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. And is not jealous. Love does not brag. And is not arrogant. Love does not become, sorry, love does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own, it is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. I know that's a lot to take in, but the bottom line to all that is that love is pretty straightforward in the Bible. It's very articulated very clearly. The problem is that we, modern broken humans, don't feel like we have enough time, or we don't feel like we have enough energy, or we don't feel like this person deserves it, or we don't feel like that this thing deserves our attention. If you are not willing to act on biblical love. If you're not willing to forgive, if you're not willing to be kind, if you're not willing to be patient, if you're not willing to get rid of all the past wrongdoings, if you're not willing to help out those in need, if you're not willing to sacrifice your time for other people, for bigger things, if you're not willing to take the time and expose those who do others wrong, if you're not willing to hold others accountable, if you can't do any of those things, then how can we call ourselves a Christian? How can we say we walk with Christ if we can't do those things? So for this week, I end with this. It's very easy to become disheartened. It's very easy to become depressed and cynical. But the moment you fall into that trap, you're already down the dark path. You're already going down the path that ignores what biblical love can provide. Biblical love does not mean, oh, I can forgive and forget and move on in butterflies, rainbows. No. Biblical love is about forgiveness. But you can still love someone, you can still forgive them, and you can still hold them accountable. You can still bring them to justice and show them their wrongs and show them, hey, you messed up. Here's what happened. We can move on from this, but we need to acknowledge that you messed up. We need to acknowledge that you need Christ, and we need to acknowledge that this cannot happen again. Now let's move forward. On that note, Patriots, hope I hope you all have a fantastic week. Um, this week was very exhausting for me, so if I sound really tired, I apologize. Anyways, guys, uh, I won't take up any more of your time. Uh, I have no idea what I'm going to focus on for next week, but I am going to try and make it really good, and I am going to make it like it did last week. The video I did last week, you know, the good one, the big one, I'm going to make another one just like that. But I'm going to dive even deeper into a subject that needs to be talked about. So, on that note, guys, have a great day. Never surrender, never submit. This is Constitution Vet, signing out.